Hey guys, it's Gaijin Hunter, and today I want to talk to you about exhaust damage. Now, just like electricity and magnetism are aspects of the same thing, stun and exhaust are both aspects of a thing called impact damage. Now, out of the 14 weapons, there are two of them that are considered impact weapons, and that is, and you guessed it, the hammer and the hunting horn. Now, damage to each part of the monster is actually calculated a little bit differently depending on whether the attack is cutting type or impact type or a gunner shot. Now in general the differences aren't that big. Um, it's maybe 5% more powerful with impact damage when hitting the stomach or legs of a monster, where cutting might be 5% or so stronger when hitting the neck or tail. Now not to get too sidestepped from the main topic, but the lance and gun lance are a little bit special in that although they are cutting type weapons and they don't do impact damage, they take whichever the two of those calculations are the strongest. So if you do 55% damage to the head for cutting and 60% for impact, let's say, they'll do 60% instead of the 55. Anyway, it's just a cool trivia fact of why the lances are so cool. Okay, let's talk about impact damage. Now, impact damage, the big downfall is, is it cannot be used to sever the tail of a monster. And that sucks. However, what it does get is exhaust damage. And whenever you deal an attack that has exhaust damage to the head of a monster, it also results in stun damage. So you see, they are really two things of the same thing. So an exhaust damage that's done to the head causes stun damage. It's not that stun and exhaust are separate things. Okay, so what's so special about exhaust damage? Well, monsters, just like us hunters, have stamina, although we don't actually see their gauge. At low rank, they have anywhere between 400 to 600 stamina, high rank 600 to 800, and G rank 800 to 1000. Now, each time a monster uses an attack, it consumes a stamina. The larger the attack, the more stamina it uses. In general, the monsters won't go ahead and run their stamina all the way to dry, um, but there are ways, though, that you can knock down their stamina as to make that actually occur. If their stamina hits zero, they will enter an exhausted state. During this period, they become slower, they fail to spit fireballs at you, they can't fly, they trip over themselves when they're charging up at you, um, and the effects of pit traps and shock traps become longer, and so on. Now when a monster is exhausted, its stamina will gradually recover. Once it gets back to about 500 to 1000, it'll go back to its normal state. Now, there's a few things that a monster will do when they're exhausted besides just drooling and letting you hit them for free. Um, they will try to eat smaller monsters, and if they run away and try to eat, they'll regain 400 to 600 stamina just for eating them, so make sure you stop that. Also, if a monster grabs a hold of you and tries to bite you, all it takes is two bites and they will recover 400 to 600 stamina, so go ahead and dung bomb them after the first bite and you'll be okay. But let them chop on you twice and now well, they've gone and done it. Now the big caveat here is when a monster becomes enraged. Even if you knock a monster's stamina to zero, if it's in an enraged state, you're going to have to wait until it's done being pissed off before it enters the exhausted state. Now there's several special actions you can do during a hunt that will actually do additional damage to their stamina. Every time you cause a monster to flinch, you do 15 stamina damage to them. Every time you knock a monster out of the air, it knocks off 50 to 100 stamina. So if you're a sword and shield user and you're up against like a Rathalos, make sure that you bring those flash bombs. Not only does it create an opportunity for everyone to attack the monster, but it also deals stamina damage to the monster as well. If you cut off the tail of a monster, it will reduce their stamina by 50. And then there is a special flinch called exhaust flinch and that will reduce its stamina by 200. So, like any status ailment, a monster has a certain threshold of how much damage it can take before it gets affected by it. For example, once you deal enough poison damage, the monster will become poisoned. Deal enough sleep damage, and it'll fall asleep. Exhaust works a little bit different. So instead of entering an exhaust state after you do a certain amount of exhaust damage, what happens is that once you deal enough exhaust damage, it will cause it to flinch, just like if you hit its head enough times it'll flinch, it's the same thing. But an exhaust-induced flinch will reduce their stamina by a whopping 200, which is quite a lot. 
So like other ailments, its resistance to exhaust damage will go up each time, making it harder to exhaust flinch a monster as the battle goes on. Of course, it has to be noted that Elder Dragons, being the bad boys that they are, they don't in principle get exhausted at all. Hammer and Horn are both impact weapons, so their attacks deal both exhaust damage when you hit the monster, and if you hit the head, it'll also do stun damage. Now, the hammer has the higher stun values, and the hunting horn has the higher exhaust values. Let's take a look at how much exhaust damage you do for each hit. So this here is the hunting horn. A forward or draw attack deals 20 exhaust damage. An attack either from the right or the left deals 15. A behind the back hit does 20 exhaust damage. The forward slam does 20 for the first hit and then 55 for the second hit. So that's a total of 72 exhaust damage, which is huge. The double note only does 6 for the first hit and 8 for the second hit. And lastly, when you encore a song, it does about 22 exhaust damage for each one of those hits. Okay, let's look at the hammer. So the draw attack does about 10. The side smack does only 5. The 3 stomp combo does 15 for the first 2 stomps and 10 exhaust damage for the final uppercut. When you hold R and you just release it, it does 15 for that first hit. If you charge it up one level, it does 20 exhaust for the uppercut. And for the final slam, it does 5 for the first hit and 40 for the second hit. Finally, there is that wild spinning attack for hammer. You're going to be doing 2 exhaust damage for each hit and then 10 for the final one. And then if you do any jump attack, it's about 10 exhaust. So you can see here where the hunting horn is definitely the king of exhaust damage. If you're hunting solo, you're going to want to spam that super slam attack as often as you want. Not only does it never bounce off a monster, but it also does a heck of a lot of exhaust damage. But online, it will send people flying, so you're going to have to use that thing smart or sparingly. Now other weapons do have a special attack that does exhaust damage. Although they're not that significant enough to really make that into a big thing. But it is worth noting because it can add up. For the Great Sword, it's got a side smack attack with the blade and that does 22 exhaust damage. For the Sword and Shield, it's got two. Um, first one is the Shield Bash combo and that does 15 exhaust damage. And then the Charge attack where you jump back and you charge with A. The actual first hit of that, if you're really close to a monster, is with the shield, and that's worth 25. For the lance, the shield advance is worth 27 exhaust damage. Now for switch axe, it's a little special. There is exhaust files. Now these are not popular, and there's a very good reason why. Each time you hit a monster with an exhaust file switch axe, it only has a 1 in 3 chance of dealing exhaust damage, and it can only be done in sword mode. Um, so, because exhaust damage, like any other status ailments, gets recovered or so every 10 seconds, the monster will start to recover. This is like nothing. Not only do you not deal enough exhaust damage, but you can't even predict how often you can do it. So, I don't think this is really that good. For Charge Blade, the impact files do exhaust damage on top of stun. However, the values, although I couldn't figure them out, are very, very little. So, don't think that there's some kind of meta here. There's not. Finally, there is a blade attack that you can do after charging your files, which does also exhaust damage, but again, it's very small. Now for bows, there are exhaust coatings that you can do, and those add 8 exhaust damage to each one of the attacks. And arc shots, even though um, they're not that very usable in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, um, they will deal exhaust damage to a monster, although I've looked everywhere and I cannot find the value. I did go into a hunt and I tried over and over and over trying to exhaust a monster, and it was not easy, so I don't think that that's that viable. It's a nice little bonus when everybody's attacking the monster, but you hardly want to make that the focus of your hunt. And finally, for bow guns, there is a shot called the exhaust shot, which has to be made. Um, level 1 does 35 exhaust damage, and level 2 does a whopping 70. However, there's only a few heavy bow guns that can use a level 2 uh, exhaust shot. You have to make them. And even then, you only get a few shots, so um, it's nice if you want to sort of make a monster get exhausted, like once or so, but that's about it. Now, there are two skills related to exhaust damage that you can have on your armor. The first one is Exhaust Attack Up, and what this does is it increases your exhaust damage by 20%. I know that sounds really good, but you have to remember that 
let's say it takes 60 exhaust attacks to exhaust a monster. With this skill, it'll take 50, so that's not a huge difference. Also, you have to consider that a monster gets enraged several times during the hunt, and when it's enraged, it can't be exhausted. So in general, you're going to exhaust a monster one to maybe two times during an entire hunt. So personally, I think you're better off with attack raising skills than wasting your time with it. Now, if you have it as a side effect on your armor, it's great. It's a nice bonus, but don't make this your focus. Then finally, Punish Draw adds the ability to have your draw attack do stun damage. That also means that it does exhaust, and it's about 20 for that attack. So it's nothing to write home about, but it is nice to know. And that's really it. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Exhaust is not nearly as complicated as people think it is, and it's not exactly the most useful system in the game. Um, I do find it nice if you're playing solo. It, being able to exhaust a monster could give you a very nice break. Um, and it's just something more to keep in mind if you are a hunting horn user and you're not utilizing that super slam, you might want to think about trying to work that into your routine because exhausting a monster is a nice side effect. Anyway, I do think Zost is going to make a comeback in the upcoming games, especially if the monsters have a lot of HP. Um, it could open up huge opportunities for people to do major attacks. And when a monster is exhausted and they sit there drilling, that will be a perfect opportunity to pull off an amazing hunter art. So Monster Hunter Cross, I'm going to call it now. I think exhaust damage is going to be a thing. Maybe not a big thing, but it's going to be a thing. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial about exhaust damage. It's not nearly as complicated as people make it out to be. And if you haven't tried the hunting horn before, I really encourage you to try it. Not only is it not that hard to use, but the exhaust damage is a wonderful side effect. Until next time, happy hunting!